Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make an RPG in Unity 5 and welcome to episode 3. So this episode we're going to be covering a whole lot of stuff on how to make our world look much better. But first things first, because we've learnt the basics of Unity, the basic functions, basic objects, basic texturing and all that, we can get rid of uh, the objects that we've got up until this point. So I'm getting rid of everything we've made here except for the main camera, directional lights, and FPS controller. So we're going to focus on um, terrains mainly in this episode and different functions and different things we can do with them. So firstly, let's go to game object, 3D object, and go to terrain down the bottom. Now hopefully you'll see a big gigantic white block in the middle of your scene. Position 000, it should default to that. Um, if it doesn't, set it as 000. Now, you'll notice with all this terrain, you'll have many, many options here. And then in each one, you'll have different options yet again. I'll go through each one of these, but not in the order they are currently in. So I'm going to start with this one. This is the settings one. This is where all our basic settings will go. So you don't need to change too much in here at the moment. I'll quickly flick through a couple of things in here and then we'll end up back here later on in the tutorial because we'll need to change a couple of things. So you've got your basic settings up here. You've got your detail settings just here. We have wind settings for grass, which we will be changing later on this episode because we will be placing grass in here. Uh, Colour as well. And here is what we're interested in at the moment, the resolution. So I think by default it's set to 500 by 500, which looks reasonably big, but if you're doing a massive world, it's not so big at all. For now, I'm going to set this to 1000 by 1000 by 750. Now, one thing to note with this, if you've built your terrain up and then you decide to change the settings here, it will scale everything you've built already, so it can mess up your game a little bit. So I'm going to go to this one here. This one is called the paint tool. Now what the paint tool is, is, you guessed it, a way of painting the terrain itself. So let's get into that. Let's actually paint our terrain to make it look quite nice. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and just call it Terrain Assets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop this grass 002 into Unity into the Terrain Assets folder. Now, as I said in the last episode, all the assets that we use, all the textures and everything we use is available on our website for free. Link is in the description. If you head down there, go to the Downloads and Assets section, you can download everything we use for free. So let's get this grass texture onto our terrain. So on this paint texture, go to Edit Textures, Add Texture. Drag and drop the grass onto here. Let's change the size or the scale, as it were, to 10 by 10 rather than 15. And leave metallic and leave smoothness and click on add. Now you should see, hopefully, it's turned very green, but it doesn't quite look like grass. So let's change that a little bit, shall we? Let's give it more of a grass look. So on the terrain assets folder and on grass 002, Hold Control, press D to duplicate that. So if you remember last episode, we did that. And what we did after that was create a normal map. So there we go. Duplicate the texture. And over here in texture type, let's change to normal map. One thing we'll do differently this time is we will click on create from grayscale. And let's click on apply. Now you'll notice this turns a purple color again but it turns a slightly different type of purple as opposed to our textures. We'll change these later on in the tutorial as well, but for now you'll see what effect this has. So back onto our terrain, back on paint, edit texture and edit texture and just drag and drop the normal map onto there. Click apply and you should hopefully see a change in the grass itself. It looks kind of shiny, so let's change in the settings the material. So it should say built-in standard by default. You can either choose built-in legacy or built uh, built-in legacy diffuse or built-in legacy spectral. I'm going to go with diffuse, and you can see it looks a little bit more grass-like now. That looks fine. So the next thing we'll do is let's create a path. 
So on paint again, edit texture and add texture. And we'll go into our textures folder and we'll drag and drop path 001 up here. We'll tile it to 10 by 10 and we'll drag and drop our normal map onto there and click on add. And now we can go and paint with this texture. So you'll notice here the brushes have different ones and they are basically just different ways of brushing onto a terrain. So if we were to take this one for example, change the brush size to 100, you would see that it is indeed quite large. These have uh, a way of kind of blending whatever texture you're painting in with the one below. So if we click on that, you'll see in the center of what we've clicked is solid of this. And as it gets further out, it blends in with the texture that we already have. That can also be achieved by using opacity and target strength. So if we take this solid on, change the brush size to about 14, and then change the opacity to about 20-ish. Let's have 20, I'll type it in. 20, and let's change the target strength from one all the way down to about 0.17. And you can see that it does make a slight impact on how it looks on the grass texture. It's not as solid as it is on this picture, but you can see there is a difference. So let's increase the opacity and let's increase the target strength. And now I'm going to decrease the brush size just a little and let's make a more solid path. Not perfect, but it'll do. OK, so that is how you can paint. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to these normal maps that we created last episode. I'm going to create from grayscale on each of them. Let's click apply and you should hopefully see the texture change instantly. Yep. So we'll do the same here, 2D and create from grayscale, apply. And same with the last one. I like to always keep it as uh, grayscale. It just gives a bit more of a vibrant feel to the um, texture and material. So next thing we'll do is we will go back to our terrain and we'll look at this first option. This first option is a way of raising and lowering the terrain itself. So in this case, let's raise the terrain just here. So let's take, uh, how about this particular brush? Let's increase it slightly and have the opacity higher. So it's 70. Now with it being higher, what it will do is it's more likely to raise the terrain. So at 100, it will raise it that high. If we decrease it to 15, it will raise it just a little bit. So obviously the higher the opacity, the higher you'll raise the terrain. So I'm going to have it quite high, about 84. Now if you hold your left mouse button and move it upwards, you'll see the terrain grow. If you click, it will just grow a little bit. So it's always nice to kind of just gently bring up the terrain. If you constantly click in the same place, it will gradually grow. So let's raise to about there I think. Okay and let's do around this side as well. You can use whichever brush you want, whichever one you feel most comfortable, whichever gives you the best effect that you are looking for. Okay so we're starting to get somewhere with this now. So the next thing I'm going to explain is the smoothing tool. Now the smoothing tool is a way of kind of evening out how the game looks or the terrain I should say. So for example, let's say we have, um, we've got a big blob here. It looks like that, just sticking up out the ground. We want that to be more of a hill. So we can use our smoothing tool, change the brush so it's a bit, uh, it's a bit more solid, uh, a bit bigger, and then we can kind of rub over that and it'll smooth it out in comparison with the rest of the terrain. So you can create a hill rather than some jagged edges like we have here. So next thing is going to be these two. Now these two options here are very similar in terms of what they do. This one here paints the grass. This one here paints any trees. Now although we have grass on our terrain, as you can see, 
This grass gives more of a 3D effect, i.e. it will kind of wave in the breeze a little bit. And if you remember, that's where this option comes in, the wind. So let's make some grass. So in our standard assets folder, I'm going to drag and drop this grass flow texture. And again, you can download it for free on the website. And go to edit details, add grass texture, and then drag and drop onto the detail texture up here. Now there are a couple of options that you're presented with. Uh, min width one, max width two, that's fine. Minimum height, I always like to have 0 0.5. I always feel that's a nice kind of number to have. A max height I like to have is about 1.2 or 1.3. The reason I don't particularly like 2 is sometimes the grass can seem a bit too tall. But if you're going for that kind of effect, then that's probably a wise idea. So healthy colour and dry colour. I'm not going to explain them too much, but um, we'll show what it looks like as we put it down. So let's click on add for now. And hopefully what will happen now is the grass will actually apply to the terrain but we won't be able to see it. So I'm going to click uh, the brush size to be a little bit bigger, maybe 54, and I'm going to click to create the grass and we don't see anything. But if we zoom in we can see the grass has actually been created. Now the reason it's been created but we can't see it because we need to change our settings. So if we go down here and go to billboard start and let's change this to a much higher number, but not too high. Let's have this as, um, let's have it as 250 maybe. Um, in fact, how high can we go with it? We can go to 2000. Okay, so let's have it as maybe 500 for now. Now the reason that does that is because in the game itself, Things will kind of pop in to, te to the terrain. So having that as a higher number means they can be further away. For memory resources, that's um, it's quite important playing with that. So to actually see it in our build scene view, we need to change the detail distance. So if we raise the detail distance to as high as it can go, we shouldn't really have a problem seeing what we're doing. So you can see at the moment, although we have our grass in, you can see a kind of brownish looking colour. That is where the, um, if we get, sorry, if we go to grass and then go to edit, we can see that's where our dry colour comes in. So if we change our dry colour to green and then just maybe lighten it up a touch to maybe a lime sort of colour and then click on apply, we should see the grass looks a little bit more how grass should be. So another trick is if we hold down the shift button, we can actually remove the grass. And that also does apply for raising and lowering the terrain. So if we have our terrain, let's shrink our brush size a little bit. And if we hold the shift button, we can actually shrink our terrain like so. So you can make it smaller or lower it if you need to. So let's put some of our grass back in, shall we? Let's take uh, this brush, let's increase our brush size to let's say 100 and let's place some grass all around here. Now we're covering our path so let's clear our path out of the way shall we so we can see what's going on and where we should walk. So I'm going to zoom out, I'm going to decrease my brush size to about 24, 25 hold down shift and then erase the grass where my path is. There we go. Okay, so we've got a little bit more just here. So let's erase that there. Okay, so let's give our grass a little bit more detail. So staying on the grass tab, let's drag and drop the shrub 001 into Unity. Drag and drop there. And then same uh, with what we did with the grass, if we go to edit details, go to add grass texture, drag and drop shrub in there. I'm going to change the dry colour to green again. And then I'm just going to lighten it up a little bit and add. I'm going to choose this brush with the shrub, brush size a little bit bigger, target strength, let's decrease, opacity, let's also decrease. and. There we go. 
So it gives a little bit more detail to our graphs. This one, and let's decrease the brush size a little more and just make a little bit there and there. Okay, so these big green mountain things now, let's give them more of a stone look. So let's go to our paint texture again and let's drag and drop this rock texture into Unity. I'm going to do the same as what I did with the grass. I'm going to duplicate, control D. And I'm going to change it to a normal map. And I'm going to go from grayscale. Click on apply. Now let's make these look more rocky. So click on the terrain, paint, edit texture, add texture, drag and drop the two. And I'm going to change the size on this to five by five rather than 10 by 10. These are numbers that you can probably play around with and see what numbers best suit you for the kind of effect you want in your game. So let's select our rock and let's start painting. So it's just nice and quick. We can kind of run the paintbrush over everywhere to give it a much better look and feel. So you'll notice there I've kind of spilt the uh, rock texture onto the grass a little bit. Let's paint over the top just there. So I want to put the grass texture back here. So let's decrease our brush just a little more, increase our target strength, and let's just repaint over. In fact, I'll choose this brush to make it a little bit more solid. Increase the brush size a little. There we go, and just paint over where we've gone a bit wrong. Okay, so now we really are looking like we're getting somewhere in our game. So next thing we're going to want to do is let's create some trees. So we'll go into this option and we'll drag and drop this tree 01 folder into the terrain assets. Uh, it'll take just a second to import and um, you'll notice it's just got a couple of uh, objects, mainly this one we're interested in. I won't go into trees too much in this episode because they are somewhat complex if you want to get them just right, but we will go through them at some point in this series. So edit trees, add tree, drag and drop your tree into there, nice and simple, add. And now let's fiddle around with some of these settings. So brush size, let's decrease a little bit, but let's keep tree density quite high. Now the tree height ticks as random and you'll have a little bar here. If you stretch it all the way to there and then all the way to the start, what you'll end up with is literally trees that are absolutely tiny and trees that are absolutely massive. So if we go here and let's put some trees there, you'll notice you'll have some really, really small trees and some really big trees. And to be honest, that does look a little bit silly. So we can get around that. Let's keep our height random, but let's define it within this kind of range. So we don't want it too high, we don't want it too low. We want to keep them kind of consistent. We also don't want them to be the same kind of color. So if we change the color variation from 0 0.4, which I believe is default, to a much higher setting, let's say one, we should get a much better variation in color. So I'm going to decrease the brush size to about 19. And I'm going to move myself over here and I'm going to paint some trees here. So as you can see, the trees are varying in size, they're varying in color, and that is that is exactly what we want. So now we have a bit of a forest going on. So um, one thing I need to quickly check on this is let's put shadows on our directional light. I'm not sure why they disappeared. But you'll notice that if the shadows are on that your game now looks much better. Shadows can actually make or break a game sometimes and they are quite important. So it might be wise to play around with them just a little bit. So now we're getting somewhere. We have a game, we have a terrain and it looks quite nice. So let's work on our wind settings for our grass before we play our game. So down here, grass tint, you can change this color and you'll notice 
as you change it, the color of the grass changes. It's generally wise to keep it a kind of between a green and yellow-ish kind of color. And I'm going to have it as sort of not too dark, but maybe a, a li dark lime kind of green. So before we change the wind settings, let's get our first person controller into place where we can actually see the grass. So I'm just going to bring uh, the controller over here. And I'm going to press play. So let's have a quick look at the grass in the game view. Doesn't look too bad. Hopefully you can see it waving. So I'm not too keen on how much it waves. So I want to change it a little bit. So let's change the speed of the wind to 0 0.2. I certainly want to change the bend to about 0 0.2 because I don't want it swaying too much. It'll look a bit silly. And let's, ch let's change the size to about 0 0.4 and press play. And let's have a look at our grass again. OK, so it's a bit more gentle now. Hopefully you should be able to see the gentleness of it in the wind. That's fine. I'm quite happy with that. So next thing, let's get the trees moving in the wind as well. So we can do that by going to Game Object, 3D Object, and Wind Zone. Now, a wind zone isn't too important. The settings don't need to be changed too much. Basically, the main is the overall strength of how the wind is going to be. So if you want it a strong wind, the higher it is. Uh, you don't want it strong, just a breeze, maybe you have it as lower. So let's have that as 0 0.5. Again, same with the turbulence. Let's have that as about 0 0.5. The pulse magnitude is a way of um, how it pulses, i.e. you get a bit of a gust going. And the frequency is obviously how much you get that. So I'm not going to change that too much. Um, wind zones are something that we will deal with at a later point. So I'm going to press play now. And we should be able to see our trees blowing gently in the wind. Yep, that looks fine. I'm quite happy with how we've got that now. So the last thing I'm going to do in this tutorial is let's change the lighting a little bit to give it not some maybe a little bit more of a real, realistic look, but to give it a bit of a different look to make it look a bit more role playing gamey. Not too difficult. First thing I'm going to do is on directional light. I'm going to change the color to a bit of an orange, a dark orange, not too dark though. About that maybe. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. That'll do. Uh, we'll keep the soft shadows on. Um, let's see. Strength, I'm going to decrease maybe to about 0 0.85. So we still have some shadows there. <clears throat> Um, we'll keep everything as it is, to be honest. So th the reason we've done that is because for our global illumination, which we looked at last time, which was in window and lighting, if we put this as a um, contrasting colour, i.e. a dark blue, it will make the game look a little bit better. So I'm going to put a very dark blue on there. Um, let me see. Yeah, we'll keep it as that. Um, we don't need to worry about too many other settings, to be honest. Uh, I want to get rid of that one and that one. They're not too important for now. We may get into them at some other point, but for now, we'll just turn them off. So let's press play. And let's have a look at our game now. So we're starting to look a little bit better. I'm quite happy with how it's looking. Um, I'm not quite sure on the light though. We might, let's change the light a little bit brighter to maybe about there. Okay, so I think that's starting to look better now. I'm quite happy with how that's looking. Okay, so we'll leave that tutorial there for now. Uh, next episode, we'll look a little bit more into landscaping, like maybe a bit of water. Uh, we'll start looking at some GUI and we'll also look at picking up something using scripting. So we'll collect something along the way. 
Um, so until the next time, guys, you modify your terrain, you build it how you want it to look. And yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching.